So here we are, Sanctuary Wood in the trenches once more, looking at the uh, zigzag pattern. Still testing out periscope, see how it goes. We can see here, looking up over the trenches, get the phone up a little bit, you can see the zigzag pattern, something that uh, was done uh, and it was seen in engineering manuals before the Great War. Um, so it's not a, a design that came about as an experience of the war. Um, it, what it does is minimize the shell fire. One shell drops in a turn or a bay of the trench uh, and only men in that area get killed. Not everybody in the trench. If it was straight, which is easier to dig, then um, obviously uh, the blast would go straight down and, uh, and everyone would be killed um, or wounded. Now this whole wood, we'll have a quick look round, we've got shell craters here and although there has been a little bit of work here and there on this site um, nevertheless it's quite an interesting location to have a look round um, in some cases like here we've got original trees what we see in front of us here is uh, a stump of an original tree of sanctuary wood still full of shrapnel holes uh, and now a place where people want to come and put their personal tributes and if we go up to the edge here you can see there's been poppy crosses on here for quite some time coming back down towards the trenches uh, we can see the shell holes again the smell is missing from here the noise uh, the continuous noise of bombardments machine guns and so on but what these trenches do is give us a good indication of what First World War positions were like and again we can see the traverses here um, what's missing are the sandbags back and front wooden planking in the bottom the duck boards for drainage but for modern visitors to the Great War battlefields places like this help you to visualize what the First World War is all about and I never really tire of coming here to Sanctuary Wood to see these little places um, yes are you allowed in the trenches you are you can go right through them, you can walk all the way through, there's no health and safety here so you can walk through and they do get quite muddy at times um, but you've got to take care because after a century a lot of this stuff is now rusting away. We've got a, a bay here uh, that's an original feature of the trench, probably had a trench mortar in it, possibly a machine gun. Um, there would have been trenches coming off to the back of these positions which would have been where the men went to the toilet. If you have a battalion of men living in here, eating in here, drinking in here, things have to come out the other end and uh, trenches have to have their toilets as well. And we're coming down into an area where the trenches begin to uh, peter out. Uh, we can see a bit of flooding up ahead of us. Got some members of our ledger group having a look around. We're following a second um, EAP itinerary at the moment. How close to the front line was this trench? Good question. This is actually a second line trench, so it's a support line. On a battlefield you have a front line, support line and reserve line. And up in that direction was the front line up on the top of the hill near Hill 62. And down here these trenches are part of the support line. If we look out into the fields beyond, that's where the third line trenches were located, the reserve line. Um, so it gives us a good impression of what the sort of positions were like. And normally as an infantry unit you'd be broken up into your companies, let's say A, B, C and D company, and you'd do a turn in the trenches here, your company in the front line, B company in the second line, C company in the third line, D company in a village close by, and uh, you'd then rotate your time, uh, each company, through those four positions. So it meant that you as a soldier would not be in the front line all the time. Are these trenches original, albeit preserved? Yes, good question again. They are. Um, the degree of preservation varies. Obviously, to keep these, these trenches in the state that they were originally in, you'd have to have a battalion of men still living in this wood, which I'm sure there's plenty of volunteers on Twitter for that, but uh, I'm not sure it would be too practical. This is the compromise. It gives us an insight into what these trenches were like, some of the original materials, some of the original layouts, but a lot of elements missing. Noise, smell, sandbags, duck boards, and so on. But it's a great place to start any visit. And if we look down into this trench, you can see some of the mud and the water 
it hasn't rained here properly for three maybe four weeks and it's still wet this trench and you imagine living in that on a daily basis so we're going to have another look around the trenches here one to pass the shell holes again bits of elephant iron um, this wobbly tin elephant iron was used to shore up positions dug out roofs um, and into the back of the uh, positions to make shelters for the troops to sleep in in trenches like these in most cases there were no dugouts they were sleeping in scrape holes in the side of the trench funk holes the troops called them um, and again when you see look into this and see how narrow it was you can begin to visualize to a certain degree as much as we can a century later what life in some of these trenches were like and as we come up to this part of the trench we can see it continuing off in the distance towards the corner of the wood now this is the second line trench you remembered to get to the first line what you didn't want to do is cross open ground so that's why you had a communication trench and I'm going to turn now look in this direction and we've got a communication trench zigzagging its way up to where the front line would have been so if you were going to move up to the front line you'd have come up through the support line taken this communication trench and made your way up to the forward positions on the hill above you and this is a typical sort of infrastructure of these trenches during the first world war and we're going to move up a little bit along the uh, communication trench here if I've missed any questions sorry do ask them again carry on we'll keep broadcasting for a little while and we're coming up into these areas again communication trenches positions coming off of here shelters in evidence the other thing that's here that's a bit too wet to go into today unfortunately is a tunnel that linked up uh, again the support line with the front line when you're this close to the enemy as they were here you wanted to have tunnels to be able to safely move your men forward and uh, they certainly had tunnels like that here made for them by pioneer battalions of their division or often by the Royal Engineers who come up prepare these tunnels for them men from tunneling companies did that progressively as the war went on and they could shore these things up and troops could move up through those to get up to the forward positions on the battlefield and just looking back on ourselves quick sweep through the wood back towards the second line trenches if we'd have been standing here a hundred years ago uh, we'd have had German snipers on the top of the hill beating down on us which wouldn't have been a, a very healthy prospect um, so we're in the bit between the support line and the front line and although men did come out here as you can imagine it was only at night when the cover of darkness would give you a chance to at least move about do the work that was necessary um, without getting shot at by the enemy we we'll look back down the communication trench good view of it there again you can see how damp it is major mud the wet Flanders plain all part of life here in Flanders during the Great War uh, we're coming to the end of our broadcast now uh, as we're coming up to where the tunnel is and this is the tunnel exit it would have continued to the front line but uh, now it comes out in this particular position here and uh, what we'll do is we'll just uh, nip down there and have a look without falling in the mud and uh, we can see a bit of a tunnel entrance here I'm sure some of you watching this may well have been through these tunnels and we'll have a look down into a First World War tunnel the troglodyte world of the Western Front war underground and perhaps that's uh, for another broadcast so thanks very much everyone hope you've enjoyed that and uh, that's where I'm signing off. Cheerio from Flanders.